500 years ago today, a scholarly document was posted by a then relatively obscure man in modern-day Germany that was to change the course of world history, the 95 Theses of Martin Luther. The publication of the theses, whilst respectfully phrased, were an overt threat to the fiscal security and general practices of the Catholic Church, and were to begin the Protestant Reformation that was to sweep Europe for centuries to follow. Martin Luther was at the time Professor of Moral Theology at the University of Wittenberg, and a clerical preacher. He had trained as a lawyer, but found this path and that of rational education to be unfulfilling. After some time pursuing the study of philosophy, a near-death experience drove him to take orders and become an Augustinian monk. A deeply pious man and dedicated scholar, Luther advanced rapidly through the order, and within a decade had attained a doctorate and become a provincial vicar, ministering to several monasteries in Saxony and Thuringia. It was within this position that Luther was to meet his historical clash with the Catholic Church. The established church had, across Europe, a very chequered history in regards to its position within society. Developing as it did from institutions founded under the late Caesars, the Roman Catholic Church had long formed the underlying foundation for much of European culture. Acting as a social unifier and bestower of favour, the Church had accumulated vast tracts of land, huge sums of money, and disproportionate levels of influence, especially in the figures of the popes and cardinals. The greatest source of ire amongst pious men such as Luther was the Church's selling of indulgences. Essentially, a papal indulgence was a spiritual reward for a monetary gift to the Church. By buying an indulgence, a sinner could atone for a sin financially and purchase a faster route to heaven through supporting the Church on earth. To men like Luther, this was proof of a corrupt organisation and a direct contradiction to the teachings of Christ, whose lessons he had come to read as teaching that redemption was God's alone to grant, giving the Church no right to claim the right to sell such favour. In 1516, the friar Johann Tetzel had been dispatched from the Vatican to Germany to sell indulgences and thereby raise money to rebuild St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Luther was greatly concerned by this and preached several times in opposition to the sale of indulgences which he deemed, unless accompanied by genuine spiritual repentance, entirely worthless in the eyes of God. Despite his protestations, Luther's congregations continued to purchase indulgences, and so Luther began to write on the subject. He consulted with various church notables and scholars before sending his theses to the Archbishop of Mainz, Albert of Brandenburg, on the 31st of October, 1517. It is also held that the 95 theses were nailed to the door of the All Saints Church in Wittenberg, a site of several relics that were also used to generate funds for the Catholic Church. And whilst this was common practice at the time, there is some debate over the veracity of the claim that Luther did so. Luther's letter to the Archbishop was conciliatory, and whilst the indulgences were sold in his name, Luther tends to assume that he was unaware of his congregation being led astray. The theses were, to Luther, designed to provoke academic and theological debate over the nature of the Church's role and authority. Nonetheless, the content of the theses did contain provocative language and were perceived by the papacy as a direct challenge to their authority. When the Pope was made aware, he prepared a case to brand Luther a heretic and dispatched various agents to apprehend and discredit him. Each of his encounters with the papal representatives seems to have hardened Luther's attitudes on the subject, and over the course of several public debates, he made clear his positions on the inherent fallibility of the Church including the shocking pronouncement that the interpretation of scripture was not the Pope's sole purview. This revolutionary theory essentially allowed people to find their own meaning in the Bible, and truly paved the way for the turbulent years ahead. On the 3rd of January, 1521, Martin Luther was excommunicated, but his ideas had taken root to an extent far beyond the papacy's capacity to contain. Luther was branded an outlaw by state authorities, but was given shelter by Frederick III, the Elector of Saxony. Over the next year, Luther was extremely active, publishing various works to further criticise the malpractices of the Catholic Church. His greatest work of this time was translating the Bible from its original Greek into German, thereby ensuring that anyone who could read could interpret it as they pleased. By this time, discontent with the Church had spilled over 
Several orders of monks had revolted, whilst large bands of peasants had risen up, believing that Luther had encouraged them to overthrow the entire social system in place. At the sight of this upheaval, Luther returned to the pulpit, and from thence dedicated his life to controlling and containing the forces he had unleashed. He skillfully used his influence to create the foundations of a new church, keeping many of the original trappings to avoid overt upheaval, whilst encouraging a new doctrine in which the Catholic teachings of sacrifice were replaced by the new ideals of praise. He also introduced the catechisms, teachings by which the basics of Christianity could be more readily imparted to the congregation, encouraging personal understanding and discovery. Luther dedicated the rest of his life to his teachings, finally dying in 1546 at the age of 62. There is no doubt that he was one of the most influential figures in European history. His 95 Theses directly began the Reformation, finally breaking the absolute hold of the papacy over Europe. Where past reformers had failed and faced the ultimate price for their pains, Luther's works both struck a chord with the disaffected and came at a time where technical development and theological thought were ready for a change. The development of the printing press allowed the rapid dissemination of new ideas, whilst the influx of humanist thought that had begun the Renaissance in the mid-15th century had already fanned the flames of challenge to papal supremacy. Over the next century, the new Protestantism spread rapidly through Europe and prompted heavy repression in Catholic states. From 1524 to 1648, Europe was racked by a series of religious wars that devastated the continent. These were especially evident in the Holy Roman Empire, the home of Luther and birthplace of the Reformation, where the staunchly Catholic monarchy attempted to stamp out the new faith. By 1617 the empire was reeling, and neighbouring powers, both Catholic and Protestant, began to take up arms. The ensuing Thirty Years' War was one of the bloodiest in European history, and saw the central states of the continent utterly ravaged. By the end of the period, over 30% of the population of the Holy Roman Empire was dead, and the borders of the nations had been radically redrawn. It is argued that the Reformation officially ended with the Treaty of Westphalia, in which the Thirty Years' War was ended. But Luther's teachings have resonated through the centuries far beyond his immediate time. No nation was untouched by the new teachings, and each responded differently. In 1534, England had definitively split with Rome, for example, but by tying its new church to the figure of the king, was able to centrally manage the changes and thereby contain the greater excesses of some European nations. The development of new national churches, and each subsequent division and foundation of new faith, is all rooted in the works of Luther. By making the Bible, and the faith developed therein personal, Luther opened the door to allow every individual to define their faith based on their own interpretations. In the publication of his 95 Theses, therefore, Martin Luther not only challenged the papacy, but challenged every individual to pursue a personal path of faith.